Hello again, everyone. Uh, it's Uncle Jim again, as grubby as can be, but I was in the process of working on something. I thought it'd be interesting for you guys to see what I was doing. I'm taking a break right now. Actually, not a break. Uh, for the first time in 35 years, uh, I don't have control over what's going to happen in the track because my brother and Frank and my son are working on the lap counter. So I've got a week of uh, downtime here, and I thought I'd start working on my shelves again. These shelves right here have been up for about, oh, I'd say about five to six years. And they've served me well. They're, believe it or not, they're dust-free up here. Uh, and I'm able to display my cars in sort of a diorama-type setting. So that's what I'm working on right now. Uh, before we started the lap counter... Um, I began work on a simulation of Brands Hatch to display my Formula One cars from the 70s. And I think it worked out pretty good. My problem here is that it's a dark corner. Uh, you're seeing it illuminated real well because I put an extra light up to display it. Um, this isn't difficult to do. Um, if you can see the bottom of it, there's uh, triangles that are built in. Let's see if I can get it on camera here. There we go. This triangle is built in with a support brace coming down. And this is nothing more than quarter inch to one eighth inch Luan, uh, which we call that in the States. It's a thin, firm, Board. Now, I got that board from Luan doors or hollow core doors that I got out of the garbage and I just cut up. And that's the thin uh, skin that's on the outside of those doors. So uh, they were in my garage and I, I had to do a lot of work last summer and I had to get those doors out of the way. So I went ahead and made uh, made these these shelves. You can see that I put a rough texture surface on it and I cut slots in there to hold the cars in and also a pin, if I can show you here, a pin to keep it honest and keep it from sliding off. So let me take you around and show you another shelf that I made and finished successfully. That is a shelf for my NASCARs. But before I do that, I want to make a point here of how important it is uh, to light your shelving to make it more dramatic. Uh, just putting it up isn't quite, doesn't have quite the same effect as when you illuminate it. Now, I have, um, what are the things called, uh, lights here that I got from the Salvation Army. They're a little bit out of date, the track lighting. I got it very inexpensive. Now, these guys are shooting at a blank wall, but that's going to be a shelf uh, with the, the Ford versus Ferrari grouping, uh, the diorama of Le Mans. I'm looking forward to doing that. But in the meantime, I did Brands Hatch. And let me show you the difference between having it illuminated and not having it illuminated. Taking that down. You can see the difference there. And I've learned that another mistake that can be made uh, is that if you just get any LED light, uh, it may give it a blue tint Watch this. I'm going to put a regular LED lamp on that. You see what I mean? I don't know if you guys can see that, but it, it ends up turning blue. So heavy LED light that I put in, like these above, that's in the camera right now, I make sure that they're the warm white lights, not the daylight bulbs. I thought that was something that should be covered. Um, I'm going to take you to 
the shelf I'm currently working on. And here too, maybe you can see the triangle underneath that supports this board. Now this board is considerably heavier that I made out of a piece of plywood. And then I put a 1 8 inch piece of cardboard over it, which made it easier to cut the slots. But like I said, when I found those Luan doors in the garbage and I got them for nothing, I snapped them up and that's what I made my new shelves with. This is the Trans Am shelf. It's a diorama of Watkins Glen. You can tell by the blue guardrails. Note these guardrails are nothing more than corrugated cardboard. If I push them, I can flex them. Cor corrugated cardboard, cardboard that I stripped with a knife and then just painted. And it was perfect 1 32nd scale. Yeah, it took a long time. It was a lot of work, but I got it done. And I think it looks fairly good. Now these shelves over here, have uh, you seen before, my NASCAR collection. These are NASCARs from the 60s. I'm going to swing you around. These are NASCARs from the 70s. And I needed to display my NASCAR collection of cars from the 80s. And that's when I built this. So this is new down here. Um, it's a replica of Turn 4 at Charlotte Motor Speedway. And uh, I did the cement uh, in the same manner as I've showed in other videos. Uh, uh, speckling it, spraying it uh, strictly with Rust-Oleum uh, aerosol cans, the 2X variety. And this is illuminated well by this guy right here. But the problem with these lights are that if they shoot at a wall, you're fine. But if they, if, if uh, people come up looking the other way, it gets in their eyes. I'll, I'll, let's see if I can demonstrate that. Boom. So what I had to do is add a little little blocker there out of a piece of uh, piece of uh, plastic or nylon, and I glued it to the to the trim. So that it it serves its purpose. It illuminates my shelves, but uh, doesn't get in the eyes of uh, guys of corner workers and people working. If you see these straps of wood here, these, these are temporary. The reason I put those in there, guys, was to help me support a shelf that's going to go in onto this side right here to cover up all this stuff in in this area. Um, I'm going to show that to you. I'm working on it right now on this workbench. And this is where I thought I'd, uh, I'd do a video because once this goes up on the wall, uh, it isn't going to be as easy to talk about how it all went together. Um, first of all, it's made of the same uh, eighth inch, three sixteenths, new one that came from the hollow core doors. I cut it into the correct width and length and I wanted to recreate uh, a place like uh, Willow Springs Raceway where clubs meet and have have their odd cars over there on a weekend. Now the track surface I wanted to be coarse as if it was a gravelly sort of sort of texture. So what I used this time for that was this Rust-Oleum multicolor textured paint. It's not the Rust-Oleum 2X, but using a mixture of this paint and this paint and swirling them together I was able to make it look like a dusty, gravelly surface. Now these cars are going to be pointing straight down, just like you see, so they don't need a pin at the other end. Uh, and it gives a lot of traction to the, to the vehicle. That's what I use for that surface. Now, 
Willow Springs Raceway is, is in a desert. So I began to put a little background on the shelf uh, using, first off, the that basket weave fence. I'll show you that fence up close if I can get there. And also what it looks like around the other end. Let me get around here for you. Whoops. So this is what it looks like more or less in the raw. You can see the strings. And note how this placemat wants to unfurl. So I glued it in place first and then I'll take a pair of scissors and cut that. But I had talked to you about the placemat that I make that out of. And I have it right here. You can see that it's nothing more than a woven placemat. Got it at the dollar store. I don't even think it was two bucks. And if you look close, you can see that it's a woven material. Let's see if I can get in there. I can't. Hmm. But you can see that it's a woven material. Um, another type of, and what I did is I cut it into, into sections like this. I rolled it up and I got it the right height, an inch and a quarter to an inch and an eighth is to scale for a 132nd scale. And I ran it through a bandsaw. You could run it through a table saw, or you can you can if you do if you roll it up tight enough, you could hand saw that, or cut it with a pair of scissors to get it the right width. I also found currently lately that there are placemats now that have a cloth backing. So with this, guys, you can cut these into any any widths you want; they don't fall apart. Um, note here that this placemat makes perfect 132nd scale pilings or uh, wood fencing. I have a piece that I cut out. I think it's inside here. No, here it is. Let me show you this piece right here. I experimented with this. And it's the right, I cut it to the right height, I do it with the scissors, to the right height for one thirty-second scale for a, like a six foot uh, wall. And I experimented with grays and a little black speckling because raw wood will turn a silvery gray, uh, a brown with a little speckling, and uh, black and a little bit of white, just to, just to get a feel of for what would be best on the track. So I just wanted to show you what, what I make that fencing out of. Uh, we had talked about it before, but I didn't get a chance to, to show you what, where that came from or what it was. But all in all, uh, I think by the next time that we meet, uh, we will have this shelf up. Uh, maybe I'll do a video uh, showing uh, how I went about making that that uh, scenic material in the back. Personally, it doesn't look like a desert to me. Uh, the stuff I used uh, for the soil looks too rich, too dark. I mean, it looks okay, right? But uh, I think what we'll do is do another video. I was asked to show how I used the scenic material. And you can see I got plenty of it in the background back here. And I'm going to try to make it look more like a desert. And uh, I'm going to show you how it isn't cut and dry. You can you can uh, rework things if it doesn't come out looking like you want. And we'll, we'll do that in the next video. So until then, I'll see you guys. If you have any questions, uh, write in. Uh, please subscribe. And until next time.